Hey everybody, Mark here at 8-Minute Axe. Today I'm doing my top 10 electric 12-string songs of all time. The basic criteria I used is one-third how important the 12-string is to the song, one-third how good the song is, and one-third how much I personally like the song. Hey, it's my list. I also gave some extra credit to those songs that I feel are important to the history of the 12-string. Some of the picks may be a bit controversial, but it's all for fun. I hope you enjoy it. I want to give a quick shout out to Eastwood. I'm still using my Eastwood Classic 12. This has become my workhorse 12 string electric. Not only can I dial in that classic Rickenbacker tone, but I can also get a broad array of meatier sounds. I'm not an Eastwood spokesperson. I'm just a guy that loves this guitar. One of the thing I want to mention before we get started is that I allowed a maximum of two entries per band because let's face it, the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, and the Birds could fill up the entire list two times over, and I wanted to give some variety to it to make it more interesting. With that, let's jump into it. Coming in at number 10 is a song that Dennis DeYoung wrote for the Bicentennial. It's one of the few classic mid-70s rockers to utilize an electric 12-string. It's also my favorite song by this band, Styx's Sweet Madam Blue. Coming in at number nine is a song that the Animals took all the way to number three on the charts in 1965. It's a song that definitely benefited from me limiting the Beatles, Birds, and Zep to only two songs apiece. But the riff is as cool as hell, and it's Eric Burden and the Animals in top form. Don't let me be misunderstood. Number eight is also from 1965. It peaked at number four on the charts and features one of the most unique 12 string riffs and was played on a Vox Phantom, an electric 12 string that Jimmy Page employed on many Zeppelin classics. The Hollies look through any window. Speaking of Jimmy Page and cool 12 string riffs, Number seven is Led Zeppelin's reworking of a Robert Johnson song. If you don't think this riff kicks ass, then you're watching the wrong video. Traveling Riverside Blues. Coming in at number six is a song that hit the top 10 in the UK twice, first in 1966, and then 10 years later upon its re-release. The song was inspired by Smokey Robinson's The Tracks of My Tears, Substitute by The Who. was the Beatles' seventh consecutive number one hit. In one telling of the song's origin, John Lennon says the song was inspired by cards that were carried by Hamburg prostitutes, signifying a clean bill of health. It features a twin 12-string attack, with George playing his Rickenbacker 360 and John his Rickenbacker 325. Ticket to ride. Number four also featured a twin 12-string attack, perhaps the most famous song ever to use a 12-string, Stairway to Heaven.
reached the top three. Any of these three songs could easily be number one. As a matter of fact, number three has previously topped many of my lists. It was worldwide number one in 1965, the Birds cover of Bob Dylan's Mr. Tambourine Man. All right, number two features what is probably the most famous chord pick was a song that was way ahead of its time. This psychedelic masterpiece was released in March of 1966. I'm not surprised that this song fizzled at number 14 on the charts because similar to Brian Wilson's Pet Sounds, this song was almost too ahead of its time to be fully appreciated until historical perspective gave it its proper due. Featuring the greatest 12 string solo ever, a song that was inspired both by Ravi Shankar and John Coltrane, The Birds, Eight Miles High. That's all I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, don't forget to enter this month's Van Gogh 12 string guitar giveaway. Each month I give away a brand new Van Gogh 12 string guitar package. I have the Sunburst ones sitting back there. They're great guitars for the money. It's really easy to enter. Details on how to enter this month's contest are in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. And if you've made it this far and you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Most importantly though, have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.